Hi, you're almost done. Welcome to the first screencast of the last unit of the AP Physics year. This unit is on rotations. So we're going to start by talking about rotational kinematics. Don't let it scare you. It's easier than it sounds. Let's go ahead and get started. So uh, rotational motion, which is what we're going to be studying now, is very similar to what we have been studying, which we're now going to call translational motion. Uh, but instead of an object moving from point A to point B, the object is moving around a rotational axis. But other than that, everything is basically the same. In fact, everything is convertible from one form to another. All right, let's get started. So for every type of translational motion there is, there is a rotational equivalent. Let's start at the basics. Uh, the first thing we studied in AP Physics, the first measurement we took was displacement, delta x. Remember, displacement is how far an object ended up from its starting position. So uh, you know, so here's final minus initial gives us delta x. Well, we're going to have the same thing with, with rotational displacement. We're going to call it angle theta. And angle theta is basically uh, what is the final minus initial angle. Right? Is that, that is our, our rotational displacement, just like delta x is our translational displacement. Now, a couple of important things to keep in mind. Most important thing to keep in mind is this. In translational motion, we measure distance in meters. And up till now, when we've been studying angles, I, you know, I've been on you like, hey, make sure you, your calculator is in degrees. But in this case, for this unit, we want to make sure that in studying rotational motion, we want to be measuring in radians. And there's a very good reason why. Okay, And the reason is because uh, one radian, so an, a, a theta of one radian, is the angle in which the arc length is equal to the radius. So theta in radians is equal to arc length divided by radius. So since this is measured in meters and this is measured in meters, I get a unitless value. So one radian means the angle in which the arc length is equal to the radius. And that makes conversion between translational and rotational motion uh, a lot easier than it would be otherwise. You can use degrees. It's just a lot easier to use uh, 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 radians. Okay. Let's just talk about how we convert between this. So, so let's just say I have a tire and it goes through one complete rotation. I can say, well, one rotation is equal to 360 degrees, right? But it's also equal to two pi radians. So instead of saying two pi r is the circumference, we're going to say two pi radians is how many, uh, uh, do, uh, how many, how, many uh, how, how big the angle was that it, it went through. Okay. So let's just try an example. So I have a tire and it rotates one quarter of a rotation. All right, so how many radians is this? Well, I'd say, well, I have a quarter of a rotation, and I'm going to say one rotation is equal to two pi radians. That gives me 1.57 radians equals a quarter of a turn. Now, the reason we want to use radians is because it makes it really easy to convert between angular measurements and, and translational measurements. So here you go. Let's just try this here. So let's just say I have a, a radius of three meters, uh, therefore, a, an angle of one radian would have an arc length of three meters. So what that means then is that the, the, the theta times r is going to equal delta x. That's what makes it so cool, right? So one radian, if the radius is three meters, then that means the translational displacement is three meters. So by using radians, it just I just had to remember that they take the, the angular value times r, equals the translational value. It's that easy, and it's going to be true for most parts of rotational, well, for all parts of rotational kinematics. All right, let's just let's just try this here, okay? So here's an example. I have a tire of radius 0.5 meters. It's rolling across the floor, and as it rolls across the floor, it's going to do one, two and a half rotations to get to here. And I want to know is how far is it from its starting point? What is this translational uh, displacement? So the way I would do that is I'd say, well, it did 2.5 rotations and one rotation is equal to two pi radians. So therefore, it, it went through an, an angular displacement of 15.7 radians. Now, remember, I can always take uh, 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 radians times radius is going to give me my translational uh, displacement. So I have 15.7 radians of angular displacement times the radius of this particular uh, object, which is 0.5 meters. And you notice the radians cancel out, leaves me with meters. 
the object travel uh, a, a, a translational distance of 5.78 meters. This is why we want to use radians. It just makes it so easy to convert. Angular value times R is equal to translational value. So look how easy it is. Okay, so just like linear velocity, translational velocity is measured in meters per second, right? So I'd say velocity is equal to delta X over T, so your displacement over time. Angular velocity, which we're going to use the uh, Greek symbol omega for, it looks like a fat W, okay, is measured in radians per second, right? So, so angular velocity is your angular displacement, which we're measuring in radians divided by time. So I just re replace, <coughs> excuse me, delta X with theta, <coughs> and it's the same deal, okay? So meters per second, radians per second, it's as easy as that. So Let's try this. I have a, a ball of radius uh, one half meter. It rolls eight meters in four seconds. What is its angular velocity rather than its translational velocity? Well, what I could do is this. I could basically, I could say that, well, all right, let's try doing its, uh, uh, I'm going to convert the linear displacement to radians. So I'm going to say uh, if, if theta times r equals delta x, then I could solve for theta by dividing both sides by r. So it's, 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 it's a pretty handy thing. I, I recommend you memorize this and then say, well, if I want to solve for this one, I just, I just you know, move the R over here. I, I, I strongly encourage you to memorize these so you can get to these. So, so the, the angular displacement is going to be equal to the translational displacement delta X over the radius. So this, this thing went 8 meters and the radius was 0.5. So that equals 16 radians. So its angular displacement is 16 radians. Well, angular displacement divided by time equals angular velocity. So I say, well, angular velocity equals angular displacement over time. So that means 16 radians in four seconds. Its angular velocity is four radians per second. So, so if I want to convert between the two, I just have to remember theta times r equals delta x for displacement. So, so omega times r equals v. <coughs> so it's pretty easy just to remember, if I take the angular value and multiply it by the radius, I get the translational equivalent. And guess what? Uh, well, let's just go back and look at this again. So, so we can look at the same problem we had before, but this time I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say, all right, I personally, I don't know about you, I personally find it really easy to keep thinking in terms of linear values and then, or translational values, and then switching them over to angular values. So I'm going to use the exact same problem. I'm going to approach it differently. I'm going to say, well, I know it went eight meters in four seconds. So it's pretty easy for me to come up with, well, that's two meters per second. But then what I'll say is, well, because omega times r equals v, I'm looking for omega. I know r was 0.5, and I know that v was 2. So when I solve for omega, I get four radians per second, which, by the way, is what we got before. It just seems a little bit to me easier to approach it this way. I it just We've been thinking about translational motion all year, just keep thinking that way, and know that if I can just remember that a, a, a rotational value times r equals the translational equivalent of that. Well, if we have displacement, we have velocity, let's talk about acceleration. So just as translational or linear acceleration, a, uh, is measured in meters per second squared, uh, so acceleration equals the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. Well, angular acceleration, which we use the symbol alpha, which unfortunately is identical to what we use for saying proportional to. Sorry about that. But uh, alpha for, for acceleration is equal to the final angular velocity minus the initial angular velocity divided by the time it took to make that change. So it's absolutely the equivalent. So just like A equals delta V over T, alpha equals delta omega over T. It's really, it's just the same thing. It's just, instead of going this way, we're going this way. So let's just take a, a, a list of these and just say, these are the things you're going to memorize today. Okay. And it's not hard. You memorized one, you memorized all three of them. So I said distance, I really meant displacement is equal to theta times R equals delta X. For velocity, I'm going to say omega times R equals V. And for acceleration, I'm going to say alpha times R equals acceleration. Not so hard to remember. Just take the 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 angular value, the rotational value, and put an, an R next to it, and you've got it. Now, these are all vectors, by the way. 
All right. Displacement is a vector, velocity is a vector, uh, uh, acceleration is a vector. Well, it turns out that, that theta, omega, and alpha are also vectors. But, but, but what does it mean to have a vector when you're not, you're not going anywhere, you're just going around in a circle? Well, we're going to use what's called the right-hand rule. And maybe you've come across this in some other course, I'm not sure. So just like I can have positive and negative directions for translational values, I'm going to have the same thing for rotation. But to do it, I'm going to use what's called the right-hand rule, okay? So the idea is I have something that is undergoing rotation. So don't worry about this. This is, this is about momentum. We'll get that later. But, but what I just want to say is this, is that if this object is rotating this way, I'm just going to take my hand and I'm going to curl my fingers of my right hand in the direction of rotation. My thumb is therefore pointing in the positive direction. All right. So if, 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 if I go like this and my thumb is pointing up, then that means that's positive. But if the object was going the other way, I take my right hand and go like this. Now my thumb's pointing down. That would be the negative direction. So, so again, curl your fingers of your right hand in the direction of rotation. If your thumb is pointing up, it's positive. If it's pointing down, that's negative. All right, so <clears throat> we're just going to go all the way through kinematics here in one quick screencast. So let's think about this. When it came to translational motion, we had velocity equals delta x over t. So for rotation, we say omega is equal delta theta over t. Acceleration is delta v over t. Well, alpha is delta omega over t. Now, we had a couple of kinematics equations that I said I wanted you to learn. So we had delta x equals 1 half at squared. My gosh, we've used that a lot this year. Well, just take this one here, delta x, replace it with omega, I mean, replace it with theta, uh, replace the a with alpha. You've got the exact same. So I can talk about how much angular displacement there would be if an object accelerates, has an angular acceleration for a certain amount of time. Is exactly the same. We had this equation. We didn't use it that much, but we can. So we can say that that just as delta x equals v initial times t plus one half at squared, I can say, well, uh, the the uh, angular displacement is equal to initial omega times t plus one half alpha times t. And this equation we've used a lot this year. Well, let's just do that. What's the angular equivalent of v? Well, it's omega. So what's the angular equivalent of of acceleration? Well, it's alpha. What's the angular equivalent of delta x? Well, it's 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 theta. So you'll see if you if you 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 don't really have to learn anything new, other than what the uh, what the uh, rotational equivalents of velocity, displacement, and acceleration are, and all of your all of your uh, kinematics equations they work just as well with an object going this way instead of an object going that way. And the last thing I want to talk about, this is kind of a, an interesting thing. So often we're going to have an object that is engaging in both translational and rotational motion, like say, like a tire rolling across a floor. Okay. So, so with rotational motion, what I'm going to find is, let, let's, let's just say this, let's just say I have an object that is, is uh, traveling at, uh, let's just say uh, 20 meters per second. Well, well, if I think about it, if this object here is moving to the right at 20 meters per second, that means every part of it has a, a vector of 20 meters per second in a positive direction. But if it's rotating, then what happens is, well, uh, it, if I go half of the radius, I've got half of the angular so, so So this part here is only going to be going 10 meters per second, whereas this one's going to be going 20 meters per second. Well, when I come down this way, it's going the opposite way. So this piece of the tire is going 10 meters per second that way. And this piece of the tire is going 20 meters per second that way. Combine this and this and look at what's happening with the tire. The center part of the tire is just going 10 meters per second because the angular uh, displacement here is zero. So this is, is zero plus 20. So the, the, the car's axle is going 20. That's why the car is going 20, right? But if I go up half of a tire radius, then what I find is this is going 20 plus 10. This part is going 30. And the top of the tire is going uh, uh, 20 plus 20. It's going 40. It's going, the top of the tire is going twice as fast as the car. If I come down, uh, halfway down here, what I find is I'm going 20 meters per second uh, translationally. But my rotational value is going negative 10, so I, I get just 10. And when I get here, 
the bottom of the tire is going 10 meters per second this way for translational motion. I say 20, but it's going 20 this way with rotational. So that's zero. And that's kind of interesting because that means that, that the part of the tire that's touching the ground relative to the ground is going zero meters per second. The top of the tire is going twice as fast as the car. The axle is going as fast as the car, but the tire is going zero. So it's really, it's static frictional force that's actually propelling the car forward. That's a little bit confusing. It's really not that important, except to know that we often are going to talk about objects rolling without slipping. Uh, and that means that, there, that, that this velocity has to be zero relative to the surface of which it's crossing. So this is a little bit long. It's a lot, but it's really not as hard as it might seem at first glance. Thanks for watching.